Well, hello, guys. I am uh, here in my uh, home, and I uh, decided to do something a little bit different. Uh, as you guys know, I usually don't get on uh, this type of night at this time of night, but I hope that I got some special guests that may uh, join me uh, tonight in regards to uh, the conversation that we are going to have. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't have my mic on. Uh, I was talking. Hey, guys, this is Kendrick Faison, uh, CEO, President of Spatial GIS, but more than anything, host of what we're calling GeoTalks. Uh, this is maybe our second. This is our second time being on. Um, last week, you guys saw a uh, we went live with uh, our counterparts over in Africa and Nigeria. We talked about uh, COVID-19. Uh, and what was to come in regards to uh, uh, COVID-19 and strategy, right? And so uh, one of my favorite cartoons was this guy, uh, I forgot his character, but he used to say, which way do I go, George? Which way do I go? And so I was thinking about, you know, what's a clever way of being able to have a discussion, a conversation about uh, GIS, contracting. Um, as you guys know, I'm a newly minted CEO um, in this geospatial arena, but more than anything, I'm fairly a new CEO. Um, and to me, you know, I, I, if you guys did not know, I used to be a, a federal employee. Um, I left the federal government in January of this year to hundred uh, percent focus on the business. And so uh, the COVID uh, was just like literally right around the corner. And so it has made me be more aggressive in regards to uh, how do I do business? How do we strategize on what's next for us in regards to a company? Uh, it's given a lot of folks a lot of time. So I believe a lot of small uh, companies, a lot of small businesses uh, are now in a position to pivot in a very more lighter way. Um, as you guys know, if you uh, turn a cruise ship, it takes a long time for it to turn. And so we're seeing, we're going to see a lot of our, um, a lot of our, competitors who are lar larger, uh, they're going to have to pivot and they're going to have to pivot fast. Uh, everybody's on Zoom. Um, everybody, everything is now remote. Uh, if you had like a large investment in regards to uh, business space, I know that one time we had a space and we kind of, we, re we reducted down real fast to uh, kind of save our bottom line and our, our capital. Uh, that That is very new now. Uh, and so we're we're about we're treading in some uh, untreaded waters uh, in regards to just being a small company. Um, a lot of companies will grow because of PPE. I mean PPP. Um, a lot of people will grow from the SBA dollars. A lot of companies will fall because uh, they didn't scale right. And so um, even from an international perspective. I think that's this is this COVID virus is going to even the playing field in some ways, especially in the geospatial realm, uh, because I think we're we have been so embedded into like the COVID dashboards and uh, the, the the just the random map making that we have forgotten about like enterprise solutions and. Um, relationships with like contract offices are going to change. And I think that those are going to be very uh, pivotal in regards to how we come out of this thing. And uh, I'm very optimistic about what's next. Um, and so I put a link on, so most people know I'm babbling, but I'm not, I'm actually waiting for some people to join. If you go back to our, our LinkedIn page, I did put a, uh, a uh, spot for somebody to join in. I wanted special guests. Uh, because I really want to have a con can candid conversation about what's next. Um, it, I think a lot of people are being spooked. Like, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of death, but there's a lot. I was talking to my, one of my friends today, um, and, and, and it's a rejuvenation of a lot of us who have been working constantly. Like, you're, you're at uh, a job or you've been at a place that has kept you busy. You know, and, and a lot of people I know when I was in the federal government, we talked about busy work. So how is that? How is that change? How is that 
uh, going to affect the bottom line. Um, you can't see behind me, but I, I have stuff all around me uh, because I'm now strategizing on how do I hit the market space. And I know that, uh, you know, I'm not here to, to, to support, to, like, to, to promote my company. I'm just saying as a small business, this thing is changing. And um, to young people, like, what is company strategy in regards to hiring the class of 20? 20. Like, what are we doing to ensure that those kids are being employed? Um, are there initiatives in the place to soften the blow of not being able to graduate? I think that's huge. Um, veterans, like, what are we doing? Unemployment numbers are about to be skyrocketing. And so how is the industry going to change? Um, is it going to be the big the big fish still wins? Or is it that the small fish swim the, their way in? I, I don't know. And I think that that is at this point in um, the business. Like, where do we go? Um Small international geospatial companies. How does that look? Uh, what tools and technologies are we now thinking about? I know that we have really pivoted to AWS and Azure. Like everything we do is cloud based. So I think um, I put out something uh, maybe a couple of months when we first came out, came into the pandemic. Um, somebody really talked about how are you f uh, feeling and how do you, how are you, Interacting, and I, and I just said honestly that when I started my company, I literally everything is cloud based. There is nothing. Um, I have no no on prem environment. I'm very. I could operate a court, if I go to Japan now. You know we can operate, and I think that that is something that's going to change the game. Um, I was on a call with Nigeria, and I think that uh, geospatial tracking is going to most definitely change the way that we look at things. And I think that the cell phones, these things here, are going to really make us pivot into a way that if I have the corona, there's got to be a way that you understand that I have the corona and to make it safe for any, the surrounding individuals. And I think the best way of doing that is being able, we all have cell phones. So how do, how do we track it? And I know that Google and Apple are doing um, that kind of tracking. But I think that's a, that's a strong geospatial process. Um, artificial, I mean, a, augmented reality is something different, right? So what happens when we have to be in, the, like what happens when the second uh, phase of this coronavirus hits? Uh, we have imagery, we have, Google has taken a lot of imagery there's imagery from Maxtar. There's uh, lots of things that are out there to play. Like, what are we doing with the data? Um, and I think that it's very important that we start to really focus on how do we really change? And like, how does it feel not to interact with individuals, right? And so can we give augmented reality to an individual that needs to get situation awareness of a particular neighborhood. Uh, like right now, you can't fly to Dallas. You could. You could take the risk of getting on a plane and sitting on a plane for five hours and or four hours or whatever the process is to check in and sit in the plane. But can we start using technology to to more lighten the blow in regards to where we're at right now? And, and, and I don't know that. Uh, I think that that is something that needs to be talked about. I think the industry is going to change in a way that I don't think we're ready for. Uh, Esri is now doing a whole virtual uh, conference. Uh, major companies like Microsoft and uh, major organizations are now moving to everything virtual. Um, and so it, it, it's like a modern day, if you guys kind of, think about it, it's like a modern day Jetsons, right? Like, or a sci-fi movie. And I, I was talking to a friend the other day and I said, 
Now, I used to watch sci-fi, and I'm like, this would never happen. But literally, you know, what would happen if we didn't have the invention of, like, video conferencing or similar to what I'm doing now with uh, being able to stream to LinkedIn Live and to have the conversation? I, I think it is it is very important that companies, individuals get comfortable with change. And I think that that is a very different place to be um, when it comes to, especially technology, because I think a lot of people have been afraid of technology. Uh, but, I, but I think that the, the technology move in the growth of cloud computing, AI machine learning graphs are really where we're at. And, and I think that in 5G, right? And so um, I think that um, that when we come out of this and when we do come out, I really hope that people can really put their minds to things not being exactly like it was. Um, and I think technology, and I think from the geospatial perspective, I think that we have, and what has proven to the fact uh, that like the COVID dashboards have been all over the world, right? Um, the power of GIS, the power of data, the power of analytics has been put in front of the world in a way, I don't think that we've ever had GIS put in front of the world. Um, I think that ESRI has done a very good job and they've put very smart people in front of this. Um, with John Hopkins University uh, using the dashboard up front. Um, but to be able to really provide real time analytical types of products in front of some individuals that from a perspective that we really have never had before. Uh, as you guys know, I know that when I worked at FEMA, we've had dashboards. Like we've had um, operational dashboards. I know that when I worked for WebVOC, we've always had dashboards. Like I remember when I first saw the battle ribbon board that we had at WebVOC, uh, and this was in, and excuse me guys, this is, you guys are gonna hear that I'm right behind the fan. So if that bothers you, um, I do apologize, but from a, I remember seeing the, the operational dashboard when I worked for WebVOC, and I remember customers going like, wow, like you can count down and you can give me a dashboard, you, you know, WebVOC allowing to have boards, right, and seeing real-time data and, and being able to be uh, updated in regards to that change, and, and so that was one from emergency management perspective. But now that we have the power to bring real-time data and sit, I think that the conversations of sensors, maybe from a federal government, maybe from an Intel perspective, has always been there. But I think now, because if we had a second wave of Corona and we really had to lock down for real, I, I really don't think that we are really thinking about how important sensors are going to be in this next realm of technology. Um, because we're so we're so dependent on people running tools and uh, machines and things of that sort. Like the sensors or being able to plug it to be able to put plug in to sensors are going to be huge. And I think that that is uh, game changing in regards to where we're going in, into the next generation of uh, this technology. Um, I, I really don't know what's next. I mean, I think that all of us have been probably sick and tired, and sick and tired of Zooms and Google Meets you know, February 30th, I mean, February 3rd of 2020, everything was good. As of March of 2020, and now we're looking at May of 2020, everything is virtual. 
And so how have we gone from really having a life to really the virtualization of what we've been kind of predicting, right? And so how does reality slap us in the face? And how do we, as practitioners of technology, practitioners of space, as we have gone to conferences and there'd be 10,000 people, or how do we pivot now to now those 10,000 people are going to be virtual? And how, what, what is the added benefit of it was 10,000 because 10,000 of us could afford to come. Um, we had the ability to come. We were senior enough to come. So now how does conferences look when there's 100,000 people? that now has the same type of information. And so do we do are we prepared to see a workforce that now advances in regards to technology, right? So the exposure has been always been a senior level kind of exposure. How do we now see from a baseline perspective that we're now exposure exposing entry level individuals with this technology? And I'm I'm just using the Ezra user conference as an example, right? So how do we realistically look at the, the change of demographics, exposure that we have always had, um, and, 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 and more than anything, like the, 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 the so what of what's next? And I think that we need to... Um, really kind of wrap our heads around it. This is a new paradigm that we're walking into. And um, I think the conversation has to be had, right? And I think that most people are afraid of that. I think another thing that I want to discuss as we are uh, here um, is the demographic effect of the coronavirus. I think that as many people know that the minority uh, communities have been rabid in regards to this virus. And so how does that change? Um, how do we start having a conversation of using technology such as GIS to talk about, and, and we were doing this before, but how do we really focus on health and the disparities that we're facing How can we use the tools to help us um, move forward, right? And how do we help communities? How do we put dollars into communities? How do we go into communities and ensure that young people have the ability to use the same technology to help their communities? I, I, I'm not, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. But I think that the conversation has to be had. Um, the death totals, how do we measure those for real? Like we, we Stephen Few says in a book, um, Signals, how do we um, measure the idea and the ideology of Real, real numbers, right? And so how do we deriferate just capturing data to really actually using the data? And I think that a lot of the data that's being put out right now is just numbers, but what's the analytics that's going to be put on the back of that? And I think GIS in our community uh, has to really focus on that. And so dashboards are good, but what? how do we analyze the dashboard? And so I think that's very key. Um, and so I really just hope, I, I was hoping some other people would join on, but unfortunately they have not. But this is just me kind of thinking outside my, thinking in my head, how do we go past the warm and fuzzy maps to really collaboratively start using Zoom conversations, really having the real conversations. And so, 
what is the strategic plan in regards to the three three months approach in regards to how do we really incorporate social distancing in regards to using tools like indoor mapping, right? Um, how do we ensure that we are using indoor mapping for what we thought before the coronavirus, that it was just, hey, we just want to do a asset management perspective, but now we have to pivot and use indoors to now focus on health, right? So changing the, the fabric of our um, work environments. Can we now use GIS and indoors to start tracking where we may have a outbreak of people being sick and, 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 and ensuring that their temperature gauging in regards to indoors? How do we start thinking outside the box in regards to that? Um, I don't know if that's something that we have really started to think about. Like, I, I think that this, you know, to, just to look at the raw numbers of these countries, they're growing. And I think that we have a very cool technology uh, that will help us change the game. But I really think that as professionals, we have to have the conversations that are very uncomfortable. And I hope that makes sense. Um, because we don't know what's next. And we have always had the answers because we kind of know what, where we're getting into. And I think that that is going to change. And so um, I think from an academic perspective, I think universities and colleges are going to be very key. I think that our young minds, our youth, our college students, our high school students are going to be able to help us understand this. I think that they need to be engaged in the research that we're having because this research may prolong a lot of us as we go forward. And, um, you know, and I think that, you know, most people are just looking at this crisis from, oh, we'll get over it. Or, or this really doesn't affect me now. Like, I just want to get out and, and have a good time. But what are the real ramifications from an economic perspective, from a social perspective, from a mental perspective, um, and then from a more long-term perspective of how do we now pivot ourselves and how do we really focus on using t the tools and the technologies to better equip ourselves if this thing happens again. And um, we, you know, and we, we talk about this, we talk about 9-11. I think we talk about the uh, 2008 uh, mortgage crisis that we face. But there is, in my, I'm 40 years old, in, in 40 years, I've never dealt with a, a health crisis. Uh, you know, swine flu, that didn't really affect us. But this hit front door, front and center. And I think that we need to really wholeheartedly have the conversation. And what I learned in my conversation with the uh, Nigerian Geospatial Forum was that it's not just a U.S.-based issue. As I'm speaking now, I'm seeing a post on my iPad that shows uh, Portugal, Brazil. Brazil's numbers today are skyrocketing, right? And so... We have we we have our governors, we have our elected officials that are opening up spaces. We have places like Nebraska and remote spot locations who are not really feeling the the rabbit piece of this uh, piece. I mean this this pandemic. But really, in, in my last couple of five minutes, what does this really look like for us? And which way do we go, like? How does this change? And what would be the social impact in regards to this? Um, I'm, I'm driving around. I'm seeing so many classes. My son, uh, Octavius Faison, he graduates this year with no graduation, 
no prom. He was a star baseball player, and baseball season was over. As a father, how do I go to my son and tell him this is okay? Right? And so I think that we are not, and I wouldn't say we're not. I just think that the outcome, the way we have to really focus on how do we put the right minds in the right room to discuss this thing, I don't think that's happening. And um, I think even when I teach strategic planning, um, and, I, and I say this all the time to my students, is that the people that really need to be in the room are not always in the room. We have a lot of figureheads. We don't really have a lot of people that can really help us make very calculated changes in regards to what's next. Um, and I say this even from my minority perspective is that if you don't have minorities in the room, um, and this virus is rapidly affecting minorities, to me, I think that that's a slap in the face, and it, it's, you, you won't get the right solutions, right? And so I think that there, there, are, there are ways, I think there are processes that we have to collaboratively come together um, from a, from a, a socioeconomic perspective, I think that it's, it's very important that we really look into ways to ensure that people live longer. Um, the psychological impact of this thing is going to be unmeasurable uh, from this perspective. Like young kids who are four, five, and six, um, what is that impact going to be? Because they're used to going in the grocery store before February and just going to the grocery store. And in May now they wear a mask. Like, I don't know how we're going to measure that. Um, I think we have a very good community of people. I commend our health workers for making the ultimate sacrifice. I commend my minority community uh, that, that really is not getting a lot of credit because behind the scenes we also... You know, changing the the sheets of the hospital floors. We are also there, uh, you know, getting on buses because we don't have true transportation. Um, we are in the grocery stores ensuring that the boxes are being packed. And um, I know the ABC has a session on, you know, the division of, of the coronavirus. But, but, but I really just want us to focus on how do we help young people? Um, it, it is a very important piece that we need to really focus on in this season. How do we help our young people navigate these troubled waters? And um, in the last two minutes, I, I hope that uh, I just didn't babble on. I hope that I, I was able to bring a little bit of uh, conversation and and content to tonight but I think in closing I think that we need to find ways to bring young people to the forefront if there's any young person in your life that you know I think if you guys know I do I'm doing virtual mentoring I think it is very important that our young people get the connections that they're missing and that means we're not as busy as we used to be. We're all at home. You know, we still have Zoom meetings and those type of things. But I, I, I hope that you will, in closing, I know I'm going on 30 minutes. I'll say I want to stop at 30 minutes. How do you help young people to navigate these waters? And so I hope that uh, my 30 minute kind of just uh, conversation has brought some type of. Uh, ideas to your mind and to my international folks I do appreciate you uh, I'm glad that I'm connected to so many of you guys who are on my weekend page thank you for putting me into your atmosphere into your community um, I'm going to sign off I know I went for 30 minutes I thought I was going to be on for like 5 to 10 minutes but there was so much stuff that I've been thinking about that I wanted to get off my head um, and I hope that this was good content 
think that, you know, hopefully we have some folks that we are going to be interviewing. But tonight I just wanted to pop up because, again, in closing, my favorite, the cartoon was the guy said, which way do I go, George? Which way do I go? He was confused. And I think many of us are in that position. We're confused about what's next. And um, no one really knows what's next. Um, but what I do know, I'm optimistic about my future. And I pray that young people that may watch this, I pray that you continue to be optimistic. To the class of 2020, congratulations. And I'll say this, the best is yet to come. So guys, thank you for being with me this little bit of time. I hope that this LinkedIn uh, video serves you well. Um, and I hope that you watched it and you really uh, listened and got some points out of it. Um, but again, thank you uh, for this opportunity to uh, have a, a, a quick dialogue. And uh, this is Geo Talks. Uh, this is your host, Kendrick Faison. And I just want to say thank you so much for all that you do for me.